What's up, everybody? Back with another professional picks video. Only a couple left in this NFL season. Now we're talking about the NFC and AFC championship game. Should be two great ones as, you know, this playoffs has been pretty good, especially in the divisional round. As always, don't forget to like the page, especially if you're enjoying the video. Comment your predictions, most importantly. And to show us some love, subscribe to the channel. Get the rest of our picks for the NFL season and beyond. Um, you're not going to want to miss a second of content. All right, Woj, well, just a couple weeks left. Kicking off with Thanks. our NFC Championship. We got the three-seeded Lions coming off the eight-point win against the Buccaneers. And they're going to be going into Levi Stadium to play the number one seeded Niners, who needed a game-winning drive to knock off the Packers by three um, last night. But this is Detroit's first conference championship appearance since 1991. So that's why you kind of expect this spread at the the touchdown now at six and a half. Mm -hmm. um, moved a little bit early already. Yeah. Um, but Purdy didn't look spectacular against the Packers. Um, had a couple big plays when he needed them, though. Um, Love looked like the better quarterback for most of that game, minus the two costly interceptions. Mm -hmm. Defense was great, though. They picked him up. Um, a lot of pressure on Love all night. And then Fred Warner just absolutely locking down the middle of the field. Makes a lot of sense why you see him at minus six and a half here. Um, some recency bias, though. I liked a lot how Detroit looked in their win against the Buccaneers. Could argue that they're a little bit lesser of an opponent than the Packers. But, I mean, those are two teams, nine and eight. Pretty similar, uh, yeah. Right. Um, but going into this one, a big key for me is the quarterback play, as always. Jared Goff, I got to lean with him, having won a Super Bowl already once in his career. Um, two touchdowns. He's, he's gone to a Super Bowl, but he's oh, wait. Not yeah, yeah, but that's right. They lost to the Pats. But, yeah, um, yeah so two, two touchdowns, though, 287 yards. A Super Bowl appearance, at least. Um, mm -hmm. Purdy got hurt in this game last year against the Eagles. Yep. Um, Debo's status is questionable. So an argument, if he's a system quarterback, um, that's a huge guy to be missing in this one. Yeah. So I do like the Lions plus six and a half here. Um, I'm pretty sure this already opened at plus seven. So it looks like it's moving. It was at already. plus six and a half right off the rip. And it must, people okay. must be betting knives there to make that plus seven. Gotcha. But at the same time, I mean, this one's so tough. I haven't really been great on these playoff reads because you can make the argument the Packers or not the Packers, the Niners, they looked a little caught on their back foot against the Packers and they still found a way to win that game when mm -hmm. they didn't really play well. Um, they played only well for the last 25% of the game and it was still enough to get them to win. So that's still a dangerous thought. Yeah. What, are, what are your thoughts heading into this game? Yeah. For the Niners last game, it was concerning to me that the Packers could be losing in the turnover margin, you know, an earlier interception from Jordan Love and then, the, you know, the one last play for their for the Packers offensively, that they can lose the turnover margin and still compete in the game. Normally, if the Niners are winning the turno turnover margin, which they do often this season, they blow out their opponent. The fact that they really couldn't take advantage of the turnovers is a little bit concerning to me. And the point that you mentioned that I really, that really resonates with me is – who of these two quarterbacks can you trust more? And it's not like Jared Goff's the most trustworthy quarterback out there, but right. you can certainly, you're certainly happier to have Jared Goff as your quarterback in this game rather than Brock Purdy. It concerns me a little bit, his level of play in general, but we haven't seen in his career him like make big-time throws and make big-time plays. This feels a lot like the 49ers uh, when they played the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I think it was the 2019-2020 season with Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo, same kind of situation, had a ton of talent around him, was a great game manager, and never really gave the game away. And he even had a lead going into the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. But when you're going to get up against MVP caliber quarterbacks, either Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson, which we'll talk about in a second, it, it takes a little bit more than game managing to win games. And that might not bite them against the Lions in the NFC Championship, but it seems like it certainly will in the Super Bowl if they do make it here. I'm with you. I like the Lions, whether they're plus six and a half, plus seven. They've got a better offense um, right now, and not even in a systematic way, but in a personnel. Ah, personal. It, it just functions better. It's smoother. It's less reliant on like Christian McCaffrey to really make the offense go. And more importantly, I can trust the quarterback to make downfield throws. You saw Brock Purdy in that game against the Packers. He had guys open, and he, and he had time, and he was still throwing ducks. So that's concerning to me as well. 
I wouldn't be surprised the Niners win this one because they are such a complete team and better just about every position outside of quarterback. But we've seen that matter a lot. Like last year's Super Bowl, for instance, Eagles, I think in most people's minds were the more complete team than the Chiefs. But the Chiefs have passed from Mahomes. And even against Jalen Hurts, who was a much better quarterback than Brock Purdy, the Eagles couldn't get it done because at the end of the day, you need a quarterback under the brightest lights to step up. And that's really hard to come by in the NFL. And that's why quarterbacks get paid so much because that, that having that X factor is literally priceless. Yeah, no, I mean, especially if Debo doesn't play, he's he's still questionable, um, mm-hmm. waiting on some tests to come back. I think losing a guy like him would just be absolutely huge for this yeah. matchup. Hey, you know, we talked a lot about the personnel of these two teams and kind of the style of play. But let's take a look at, like, the PFF grades for these teams um, as of Sunday. So, like, first looking at the 49ers, the highest team overall in PFF grade. Uh, offensively, the one real weakness is pass blocking, and I think that could come to haunt them against the Lions, who, if you look here, have a pretty solid pass rush grade. Nothing crazy. But um, when you got guys like Aiden Hutchinson, that certainly makes an impact. I think the way to beat the 49ers is make Brock pretty uncomfortable and, you know, make him flustered. I think that'll help a lot to give the Lions a chance here. But what stands out to you here with these PFF grids? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree on the the pass rush for, for Detroit. Um, I mean, really, ever since they got Aiden Hutchinson, I feel like that's been a huge key in just changing that franchise's trajectory. Um, but I think I know I do like Goff in this matchup over Purdy, but I mean the the 49ers defense is still also just top Ooh. of the league. I mean, watching that last game, I mean Jordan Love had to make some tough throws. He, he, did. he did. He did exactly, but he was constantly pushed out of the pocket. I mean that's why his stats um, being worse than Purdy, but everybody or not everybody, but at least most people agree that. Love played a better game. For My ball the test, he, of that he game. certainly looked better. He made flasher throws. He made bigger plays. Didn't win the game. He also made some mistakes. And that's right. what happens when, you, when you're when playing this 49ers defense, though. They're going to force mistakes. They're going to put you in tough situations. Right. But I think with a quarterback like Jared Goff, um, somebody who doesn't necessarily force the ball a little bit too much, um, plays within that offense with all those weapons, um, I think I, I like the under 51 here. I mean, that total seems – very high to me. Um, I mean, these are two great offenses at the same time. They could blow it out of the water, but I I like I like this one to go under. I think it's gonna be a tough battle. Um the Bucks did start scoring late in that game, but I mean Detroit's a team that just praises their toughness. I mean, this is gonna be a tough game for I mean the Niners who are arguably the toughest team in the NFC the last few years. Um I think it's just gonna be a grinded out type of game. Yeah, I'm with you on that under two for a variety of reasons. Um, but it just seems like um, in playoff games, especially as you get later into the playoff run, the screws really start to tighten on the defensive side. I, said, I talked about this last week. I talk about it all the time. But it seems like the defensive adjustments really reign supreme there. Another point I like the under here, too, if you're looking at these two teams, um, you see that on defense, the one re- weakness for the Niners is the run defense. And you kind of saw that against the Packers. Aaron Jones looked great and really explosive about the line of scrimmage. You know, he's been looking really good in the last four weeks, but he's getting older. And, you know, he kind of looked like he's drinking from the fountain of youth that last game running against this 49ers defense. They didn't have too much of answers for him. The Lions here have the second highest run block grade in all football, second only to the 49ers, and a really high run grade as well. So they're going to want to exploit that. And they have the offensive line and the duo running back to take advantage of the perceived weakness on the run defense for the Niners. And then running the ball and running clock for the Niners, too. I can just mention the best run block unit in football and then a really in the highest run grade in football, too. Two teams that are really good at running the football, two teams um, that will probably try to control the clock, and especially the Lions take advantage of the relative weakness of that 49ers defense. Where I think the Niners yeah. really blow this game open is that terrible, terrible coverage grade for the Lions. It seems really hard to be able to make it to the Super Bowl and compete against good teams when your your secondary is that suspect. So that's yeah, what no, I agree. But I mean, I mean, the Packers did get pressure on San Francisco too. And they had six um, quarterback pressures, um, equaling the amount that San Francisco had on Jordan Love in that last one. So I think Detroit, yeah, while the secondary might not be great, I think they could at least put enough pressure on Purdy. We saw it in the last one that yep. when the pressure was there, 
apparently he was the highest graded quarterback under pressure this season, but it didn't look like that um, in the last game against the Packers. Yeah, the but, heat gets turned up in the playoffs. So the pressure is one thing in the regular season, but it's a different animal in the playoffs without a doubt. Right. And then I also agree with the, the Lions run game. I mean, Jameer Gibbs had a couple game breaking plays or one in specific mm-hmm. against the Bucks. Big explosive run. I, I think he could have similar production to, to Aaron Jones in that last one. So, so yeah, I think I think Detroit matches up well. Same time. Niners, number one in the league at home. Yeah, the Niners are just basically one, number one in everything. Uh, the Detroit, Detroit's going to want to compete in this game. It's really going to have to come through the run game, like we mentioned, and in the pass rush, really bandaging up that secondary and not allowing Brock Purdy to have four or five seconds in the pocket to find one of the myriad of weapons that he has. That's going to be – and that's the story to see. And so it sounds like we're both on the lines, though. Again, the quarterback advantage there, um, I think – warrants betting a seven point uh spread as the underdog giving them seven points and i think the under 51 as well um especially with how good the niners defense is you could see that if it goes without saying yeah. that if we think that um the lines are going to compete it's going to have to be i think a closer game and i don't think you're expecting them to, to light up the scoreboard against the 49ers defense so that lends itself to the under the way we're talking about this game script you know lions defense slowing down brock pretty a little bit with the pass rush Competing and putting up enough points against the number one defense to be within seven points within the end of the, by the end of the game. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm I'm on the same page with you for this this matchup. Can really put yeah, it any, is, any other way. Yeah, and the one last thing: looking at Shanahan throughout his career, um, he doesn't seem he's not the kind of guy in the playoffs that like, blows out other teams. Uh, I looked at even like the Cowboys last year, the game they won by like seven. They obviously had the injuries, lost the Eagles. But Shanahan's had his struggles in the playoffs as a head coach for the 49ers. And I really think that it comes down to like lack of adjustments that are being made. Like there's a reason why Andy Reid, Spagnuolo, these guys are so good. It's because they're able to make John Harbaugh make adjustments on the fly mid game. And that's going to be something that we need to see from the 49ers to take the next step up to Super Bowl team. And if they can't do that against the Lions, then I really even more so like this plus six and a half plus seven. But moving on from that, I'll let you take over this Ravens game. Yeah, so we got another 1v3 seed um, matchup in the AFC Conference Championship. Um, the one-seeded Ravens dominated the Texans. I um, I don't know. I feel like a little naive thinking the Texans were going to hang around in that one. Um, yeah. Ravens absolutely blown them out, 34-10. to 10. Um, Looked ready for their, a Super Bowl run, but at the same time, Chiefs um, been a constant in the AFC for the last several years now. Um Mahomes continue to dominate the Josh Allen matchup. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard to not bet on the Chiefs also after knocking off a red hot Buffalo team that's won their last six games. Um looking like a great game. Um probably a better matchup on paper than the NFC conference championship. But yeah. Yeah. the Ravens defense absolutely shutting down Stroud, as you mentioned, and that Texans run game. Um I thought they really exposed how the Texans were short on weapons. I mean, no tank Dell. Oh, um, it just looked like too. Yeah, I mean, Demeco Ryan's made a point in the post game presser saying that they're constantly playing on their side of the line of scrimmage, both offensive and defensively. But mm-hmm. I just felt like none of those guys were making plays for the Texans, um, whether it was Singletary, you know, Brown, any of them really. And I think for that reason, I, not that you ever want to play the Chiefs, especially in the playoffs, but I think this is almost a little bit better of a matchup for the Ravens, um, letting them key in on guys like Kelsey, Rasheed Rice. Um, I mean, the Chiefs, they, their receivers still make those bad plays over and over. They got bailed out this game. I mean, mm-hmm. Nicole Hartman fumbling out of the back of the end zone when they're up three, yep. chance to make it to 10 and really try to shut the door, gave it back to the Bills. Um, they couldn't capitalize. But once again, these Chiefs wide receivers make a big um, mistake late or in the fourth quarter. I just mm-hmm. I don't see how the Ravens don't capitalize on that. Harbaugh coach team, um, Lamar looks like an MVP level quarterback taking care of the ball with that top defense um, doesn't have to do too much. Yeah. I think this Ravens team is just set up too perfectly. Yeah. This game. yeah. They don't I, make I'm all over them, even at the minus three. Mm-hmm. They don't like? make a lot of mistakes on offense, turning the ball over and they force a ton of errors and turnovers on the defensive end. I think that's why they are the number one team in terms of turnover margin. And like you said, the chiefs wide receivers have struggled intermittently all season long and made mistakes 
um, in a lot of games that they've lost, you know, they can't keep getting away with that. And they have to play mistake free football to beat this Ravens team because there's not a lot of weakness there. They're looking and eyeing, looking to eye to get back both all pro tight end Mark Andrews and all pro cornerback Marlon Humphrey. So they've been doing this in the past. I guess it's only one game, but they've been doing this without some of their best players on both sides of the football. Obviously, they have MVP Lamar Jackson there. So it's it's hard not to love the Ravens here. I got to give some love to the Chiefs, my plus three. It's like it's teetering right. between plus three and plus three and a half because one, while Lamar Jackson is the MVP, we're taking quarterbacks. Obviously, we're taking Patrick Mahomes over Lamar, especially in a playoff environment. Right. This is Lamar Jackson's first AFC championship game as he is not made for this level of the playoffs in his career. And there's a reason for that. Like he's lost to teams like the Titans who were less talented than the Ravens in 2019, but they out schemed him with great head coaching from Mike Vrabel, who everyone that's watches his videos knows I love the guy, but there's a way to beat this Ravens team. Even this one that looks like there's less weakness than normal, but you got to stop the run and you got to make Lamar Jackson throw the football. That's how you, it's much easier said than done without a doubt. But if there's a team that's going to be able to wait to force that, it's going to be Steve Spagnuolo and this Chiefs defense. So I have a hard time seeing the Ravens blow out the Chiefs. You know, Mahomes will make some magic happen. He looks he looks amazing against the Bills. Plenty of 20-plus yard completions, not a lot of incompletions. Um, really uh, pinpoint accurate and precise in that game. So if he gets time, this offensive line for the Chiefs, while it might not be as good as the Ravens, uh, it's a really good offensive line, and that's kind of been a staple the last few seasons. They give Mahomes time. If they can, if you give him enough time in the pocket, Kelsey will get open. He'll make off script plays, and the Chiefs, you can never count them out. So I think plus three, plus three and a half is about where the line should be, but I'm with you. Uh, it does seem like it's the Ravens' time to win this one. Yeah. I mean, to your point, you mentioned how you want to beat the Ravens. You got to stop the run. Gus Edwards did get hurt in that last one. Not really sure on his status for this game. Well, not a marquee player that's already a backed up or a, a banged up backfield. Um, yeah. J.K. Dobbins always getting hurt. Um, yeah, luckily, they got uh, Dalvin Cook now, and hopefully they're hoping he can pr- provide a spark in that backfield. And he had, some, he had a couple of really good runs in that game, and I'm sure now with that injury, they're going to look to prop him for a much larger workload this game. Yeah, I think this is also – I mean, you mentioned Mark Andrews coming back, but <clears throat> this is first time – first Right. Um, I mean – as long as he could go, he's gonna, it's going to be hard play. for him not to play, right? Yeah, he's, well, he's probably not 100%, but still, he'll be out mm-hmm. there on the field. Doesn't matter. Um, but I, th- I think this is the first time, too, though, in Lamar Jackson's career where he has better weapons on the field for him than Mahomes. Yeah. And yeah. then, but there's also the, the yin and yang to everything. It's probably the best defense Mahomes has had. The Chiefs making big stops. Um, at the same time, they needed that missed field goal from Tyler Bass, 44-yarder. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get those from Justin Tucker. No, he won't most have. accurate field goal kicker in NFL history. So, I mean, they had a couple lucky plays, but I you, I just don't think you're going to get away with those against the Ravens. Yeah, like, it's a, it's a great point. Like, even in the special teams, you're not going to get mistakes from the Ravens. You know, you, you, anything within 50 yards for Justin Tucker is basically automatic. Like, you have to play a crisp near perfect game especially when you're less talented if you're going to want to beat the Ravens here so and talk about less talented looking at the PFF it's a pretty stark difference between where the Ravens are ranked overall just behind the 49ers and the Chiefs who again this is doesn't take into account the stats for their game against the Bills that takes a little bit for the model to run and spit those grades out but you know the 10th best team um in PFF's a little stark difference here uh, what stands out to you right off the bat Besides two versus 10. Yeah, I mean, two versus 10 is obviously um, the key one there. But, I mean, I don't know without sorting it. I'm kind of surprised to see Kansas City's run defense ranking, even with the the Ravens' run defense. I mean, when I think about Baltimore this year, I just think very stout run defense with uh, one ever since they got Roquan Smith over there. Um, but, but, yeah, I mean, two versus 10, I mean, Kansas City's obviously going to be outmatched in this one. Um, yeah, the run defense. What's really bouncing good. off the, the screen to you, though? Yeah, no, you, you made a good point that run defense. Chiefs 18th best run defense here going against the Ravens, who any time you're graded plus 90 or 90 plus in any of these categories, like that's elite in any individual uh, category there. So being able to run the ball at an elite level for the Ravens against a subpar 
bottom half run defense for the Chiefs is scary. You're going to want to make adjustments for that if you're the Ravens. Or, sorry, the Chiefs. And I guarantee they will. If the Chiefs are going to lose this game, it's going to be because of one of two things. Either they cannot stop the run, which I think they're going to try to patch up in terms of scheme and personnel, or Lamar Jackson is able to make throws, which is very likely or very possible given that he's looked really good at passing this year, more so than he has in the past. Now, he's still not the guy that I want to be my pocket passer, but he's made improvements this year, and he's shown that – uh, he can make throws. Um, not every throw, not the pass for home throws, but a lot of them. And that might be all they need with how good this defense is and how good their run game is. But I cannot emphasize enough that every play is so much more important in the playoffs. This is uncharted territory for Lamar Jackson. We don't know how he's going to react on the lights. Took Josh Allen a long time to start his career to really acclimate to the playoffs. And even now, he still seems to not be able to step up and get past the the divisional round. Um, so it's it's tough for quarterbacks. I think we take for granted guys like Patrick Mahomes and that we've seen Brady do for so long. We think that all it takes is having a good team and you can keep moving on in the playoffs. But having a rock-solid quarterback with nerves of steel is invaluable. And we don't know how Lamar Jackson is going to hold up the situation. So I think that, too, makes me lean towards the Chiefs as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, every time you have Mahomes, I mean, he's had more success than anybody in the playoffs over the last five years. I mean, it's hard to go against him. But, I mean, I noticed on the graphic in that last Ravens game, they, they had 10 wins against teams over 500 this year, the most in NFL history. Wow. So this team is definitely proven against good competition. We talk every week about teams that are on fraud watch, like the Dolphins, the Cowboys. We've seen them get knocked out early. I mean, the Ravens have never really been on that fraud watch once this season. No, it's the epitome um, of uh, pretty much strong football. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're just we're pretty much left with all these teams that we've identified as the stronger ones of the group. I mean, the Chiefs have had their their bumps along the way, and I feel like it's it's a matter of time before before a receivers' mistakes or just really the lack of depth on that offense. Um, comes into play like you said they were I, that was the last point i wanted to make before moving on you know the receivers are not a strength for the ravens and they have the second or sorry for the chiefs and the ravens had the second best coverage unit in the football again getting marlon Humphreys back too they can't they're gonna struggle they're gonna really struggle to get open here they're gonna be smothered in coverage with some just outstanding players in the ravens secondary i love kyle hamilton i think he's a secondary player now but as safety over there they got so many good guys and so many great packages with, uh, I think, Mike McDonald is their defensive coordinator. I really like what he's doing, taking over from Wink Martin, Martin Dale. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Um, So Just, it's going to be a tough matchup for those wide receivers. Like, Rasheed Rice has never seen a, a secondary like this in a short career. You know, having Marquez Valdez scaling is one of your best options against this great coverage unit. That's a tough task. And if, if I'm the Ravens, I'm taking away Travis Kelsey and making these sub cal sub par Ravens wide receiver Chiefs. I keep doing that. Chiefs wide receivers make them beat you. And odds are, like you said, they're not going to. They haven't yet. And they keep finding ways to lose the game and blow it for the Chiefs. Um, take away Kelsey and this Chiefs team may very well struggle against these guys. I'm thinking low scoring affair. Yeah. Some great defenses uh, and great defensive minds, more importantly. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm just used to the Chiefs, like, Seeing Mahomes win the game down the stretch, didn't really feel like that tonight. Um, no, I mean, we mentioned it. They fumbled it out the back of the end zone, got lucky on the missed field goal. It just feels like they, they got those lucky. Some of those 50 50 plays or just drives that they needed. I mean, the defense did show up and make yeah. the plays, but, but it didn't seem like Mahomes took over late in the game. And against Baltimore, I mean, from what we've seen this year, it just, it just feels like they're going to. They're going to take the moment. I mean, it's it's a little early to say, but just imagine if we get another Harbaugh championship, two in the same year. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Um, we'll talk about more of the prediction later too, but for me, I know you're on the Ravens. I'm on the Chiefs plus three, plus three and a half. It's the same kind of reason I'm on the Lions. I'm taking the better quarterback. Um, and even perhaps you can even say for the Lions too, better coaching. Uh, just – with Shanahan's playoff record, uh, you know, it's hard to say that he's a he's a great guy in the in the scripts, but in the game, the adjustments, I haven't seen it. 
And I've certainly seen some great coaching from Andy Reid and Spagnuolo in Kansas City. Um, with, with that in mind, I got to take the points here. Patrick Mahomes plus the points. You take it every time. If you lose, swallow your pride and live with it. But it's hard to bet against Mahomes, that's for sure. And this, yeah, is, a, this, is, a, uh, this is some stats that I pulled together before the season in another video. But I think it's still pertinent now when you're looking at you know, offensive points per game and defensive points per game are very, very telling. And more, the more important stat here is defensive points per game. You got the Ravens who are first, and but good for the Chiefs being third. That's going to help them a lot as, you know, you see the Ravens are the fourth highest scoring offense per game. Chiefs lagging a little bit at 13th, but they still have some magic in them. But the real importance here, as I said in the video, Teams that end the regular season in top five in both offensive points per game and defensive points per game. And in the last 25 Super Bowls, they have made – 25 playoffs, they have made the Super Bowl every time. Except one team, and that was the Lamar Jackson MVP season for the 2019 mm-hmm. Ravens. So something to keep in mind. But every other team, if you're top five in both, you make the Super Bowl. So going off that, it's really hard to go against the Ravens here. They seem like the team of destiny in that regard. And the same thing for the 49ers, third in points per game, second uh, defensively in points per game. You know, it seems like the the writing on the wall is there too. And here's the nail in the coffin for the the Lions, 22nd in points per game. It's That's why the the total is so high. they got great offense, but their defense lets everything through. And it's going to be really hard um, when your defense plays that poor and lets up that many points. A team like the Niners with so many weapons should see through that and break through and, and win the game, put up enough to win there. So I had it before the season started. I had it in the other video, which I'll link. It's it's hard and it's corny to say the Niners-Ravens, but, you know, I said it when there were 14 teams in the playoffs, and I'm saying it when there's four teams. It still seems like this is the matchup that happened. Any, any different pick from you? No, I mean, I, I have to agree. I do – I really feel like the Ravens. I I feel like the Ravens are gonna win the whole thing this year. I do too. Um, I, really I mean, do. that does feel like some recency bias, but I mean, they had the best record in all of football too. I, I think, I think the Niners this defense. I Brock yeah. will not beat this defense without a doubt. Once once these two teams win, I will be hammering the Ravens in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I could see the Lions winning in the NFC still. I could. I think that's where. I mean, and for the bigger spread, I think that game is, might get a little more interesting, which is crazy. I mean, I'm it's kind of just funny. ignoring Mahomes because, I mean, he's been the best quarterback in the NFL. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's there's a I'm lot of ways you could I'm, like No, this. I'm going to Despite the much larger spread, there is a very real chance the Lions, you can almost argue they have a better chance than the Chiefs to upset the number one seed this week, which is interesting. But I'm with you. It definitely could happen. Um, both underdog teams this week have the better quarterback, but both lack a severe disadvantage in a lot of other positions. And we'll see what which one reigns supreme. Yeah, I mean, to me, it just feels like the AFC, as it, it kind of has been the last few years, is the superior conference at the moment. Yeah, and, and what do you think about this? No matter, let's say the 49ers win, does it even matter who wins the the? Chiefs and Ravens game, are you picking the AFC or are you going to pick the Niners against either one of the opponents or the other? You said the Ravens pick the Niners. Do you think the Niners could beat the Chiefs? I think they could. I think that's a closer matchup in my mind. I mean, yeah. that's the rematch from a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that one would get interesting. I, th- I could see that one being closer to an even line. I mean, yeah. you got to go with Mahomes, a quarterback, get the I huge advantage so. there, but then at the rest of the roster construction, I mean, you're you're leaning pretty heavy with the Niners. Yeah, I think in that situation, and we'll see if it happens, but I think in that situation, it'd be very similar to the last time these two met in the Super Bowl where the Niners are winning the game and they control it because they're the more balanced, dominant team. But at the end of the day, when you start to put pressure and you need a quarterback to start converting on third downs in the passing game, then Brock Purdy starts to fall apart a little bit. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I, think, I, think I feel too good about the Ravens. I mean, Mahomes might just – have a master class. I mean, I haven't yeah. seen it in a little while. They've been grinding out some wins, but I'll tell you what, if the Ravens do play the 49ers, it's going to get ugly for the 49ers. We saw it once. Um, it's because the Ravens have such a good pass rush. I think they led the league in sacks. Um, they, they're the sixth best pass rush grade, but I think they led the league in sacks. It's going to be, and you saw that what happened when, in that game when Brock Brady was rushed, 
interceptions, errant throws, you know, they, and they struggled. So I hope this is a rematch, and I hope the game's better than when it was during Christmas. But it does seem like it's the Ravens' team of destiny here. Yeah, no, nah, I'm I'm with you. But that's all we got, Slew. I think we covered it pretty exhaustively. Remember, in the comments, let me know who you're taking these games and what your Super Bowl predictions are. But best of luck, and I'll see you next week for a Super Bowl discussion.